Coming up next is Professor Neil Turok, AIMS founder and director of Perimeter Institute, who will deliver the last set of opening remarks. Please join me as we welcome him on stage. Thank you very much, uh, Your Excellencies, uh, all the VIPs, VIPs, and above all, the EIPs, the extremely important people, the young scientists and students who are in this audience. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, fantastic to see such a packed house. I'm told there are 1,600 people here. This is the largest scientific gathering ever held in Africa. <laughs> As has been mentioned, we live in a troubled world. It seems uh, confused in many ways. Some countries are retreating into nationalism and prejudice, but uh, I don't sense that here right now. Uh, this hall is full of internationalism, optimism, and the desire to reclaim uh, the tradition of science uh, in Africa. I brought with me uh, an interesting object. Uh, which uh, it's this, it's the Ishango bone that was mentioned, uh, discovered not too far from here in Virunga, what is now Virunga National Park. Uh, it's an example of the first, one of the first mathematical artifacts that are known. Uh, I invite you to come and share it with me. It's only a copy, unfortunately. The original is in the Belgium National Museum and uh, it needs to be reclaimed too. But, <laughs> that's our task. But I invite you to come and look at it. It's really cute. It's like a little office tool. It has a quartz crystal in one end of the bone, and you use that to mark and to write. And on the side of the bone, it has uh, marked in notches all the prime numbers uh, up to 20. And if you add up the one side and the other side, each side adds up to 60. So somebody was doing something fairly sophisticated uh, with numbers 20,000 years ago uh, near here. <laughs> so at the same time that we have this sense of confusion globally, a uh, sense of anxiety among young people, uh, scandals of the abuse of data, uh, it's deeply ironic because the progress of science has never been more exciting and the reach and power of it has never been greater. So I'm going to cheat and show a few slides. Uh, let's begin. Within our generation, we have observed the entire universe. Uh, we're struggling with the technology, but uh, there it goes. The Big Bang, that's the focus of my own research. And uh, remarkably, we can now see it all. And what we see there is unbelievably simple. The universe is not chaotic and arbitrary on large scales. It's, it, it, it's stunning in its beauty, in its simplicity, in the accuracy with which we can describe it uh, using mathematical theories. You see the solar system in the middle, as we look out, we look back in time, we see the, the origin of galaxies and stars, and going back further, we see the hot radiation of the early universe, and the edge of the picture, the white uh, surround, is the Big Bang singularity itself. We are now developing mathematical theories of exactly what happened. There's been spectacular progress, absolutely spectacular progress. Just last October, there were observations revealing this. This is the collision and merger of two neutron stars emitting gravitational waves predicted by Einstein's theory, and then a big flash called the kilonova. Uh, and through this event, we have learned that most of the gold and platinum and uranium, which we find on Earth today, was created in spectacular events like this. Uh, this was a genuine surprise. Theorists had done modeling and predictions. Uh, the observation was made using the la uh, Laser Interferometric Gravitational Wave Observatory, LIGO, in the US and Europe. 
and, uh, and then followed up by observations from 50 different telescopes all over the world in all wavelengths. An amazing example of the collabor international collaboration of science to discover the origin of the heavy elements. Uh, a, a, a simply spectacular result. Uh, that brings me to people. <laughs> science is all about people. And I want to uh, remember here two very special people. Uh, on the left is Francis Salotte. He worked on both of these scientific topics. Uh, before, so he went to high school in Ghana, and before he even went to the UK to college, he founded a school in his hometown in Salt Pond. Uh, so he was a pioneer, uh, creator of educational institutions. And uh, Francis then went to the UK, did his uh, undergrad, went to Princeton for his PhD, uh, with Robert Dickey, one of the founders of the Big Bang Theory and, and these uh, precise observations. And Francis actually helped uh, Robert Dickey to, to test Einstein's theory to one part in 100 billion uh, in 1964. Uh, amazing feat. Uh, and then on the right, of course, we have Professor Hawking, uh, sadly passed away quite recently. And uh, I will be going there to his funeral uh, this Saturday, and I know I, I would love to take your uh, warm wishes with me. Now, what brought these two people together was Ames. These were the two patrons of Ames. Uh, they were both uh, brilliant scientists, but also both much more than that because they cared about people and communicating science and sharing science and the importance of science. And we were very privileged to have them as supporters. Now, uh, we often talk at Ames that, uh, about the fact the next Einstein must embody both the humanity and wisdom of Mandela, possibly the greatest leader of the 20th century, as well as Einstein. Uh, possibly the greatest scientist of the 20th century. Um, and I think uh, Alotti and Hawking both embodied these qualities. Um, but who is the next Einstein and, and what will they look like? So that, I think, is one picture. That's a picture we promote. At Ames, we, are, we view the richness of cultures of Africa as a treasure as a profound resource which will stimulate progress in science. Likewise, we emphasize opening avenues for women as vital uh, to the future of science. And in fact, this, uh, this young woman, I'm proud to report, who, who was the example of the young Einstein, uh, received her PhD last year at uh, Perimeter, and she's recently joined uh, the University of Swaziland as a lecturer in physics. These are some of her papers. They're about dark energy. They're about the causal structure of space-time, very deep and uh, challenging topics. But she's one of many who have uh, come through Ames, contributed to Ames, and uh, are laying the basis of the scientific community in Africa. And uh, so this is one answer to Thierry's great questions. Why are we here? This graph shows the number of youth between 15 and 24 years old in uh, some notable regions of the world. So you see China peaked in 1990. Uh, India will peak in 2020. And Africa is on the rise. And by 2050, when you talk about young people in the world, it will be impossible to do so without speaking about Africa. China, of course, invested very heavily in education, in technology, and science, and the results are obvious. India, likewise, is a rising force. And uh, our task is to make sure that sub-Saharan Africa, in fact, the whole of Africa, this is a bit of a colonial graph, I must admit. <laughs> it should say all of Africa. The whole of Africa realizes its, uh, its potential in the same or even in better ways. I want to share with you some very particular projects that I'm uh, excited about. 
in Rwanda. We only opened Ames in Rwanda in 2016. It's had its first two classes of students. Um, the young man in the center of the, this picture has helped to found Quantum Leap Africa. It's a research center with a very high ambition to prepare Africa for the coming quantum revolution in technologies. And uh, already this initiative is having some very surprising and exciting consequences. That's the thing about good science and good initiatives. They are unpredictable, uh, that they are opportunistic, and they move very fast. So soon after Prince agreed to, uh, to lead this effort, uh, an opportunity arose to build a radio telescope in Rwanda. As you know, South Africa will host the world's largest radio telescope, the Square Kilometer Ray, that will turn on in the mid-2020s, and it will be the best instrument for astronomy in the world. But uh, things are moving faster than that, and so there's a smaller radio telescope called Hyrax, which will consist of a thousand satellite dishes, uh, again in South Africa. And there was an opportunity to uh, create an outrigger telescope, a much smaller one, just eight satellite dishes uh, in Rwanda. And these two arrays of radio telescopes working together will create a much higher resolution picture of uh, dramatic events in the universe. And what they will be observing is precisely the kind of events I told you, the collisions of neutron stars, these very powerful events in the universe, very distant, uh, but, um, but so powerful we can see them brightly. And it is our belief that this combination of Hyrax in South Africa and uh, the outrigger in Rwanda and perhaps other countries will actually do the leading science in the world in that area understanding what are called fast radio bursts, the most powerful uh, uh, events in the universe. Uh, and this will turn on in 2019, and we may see, see some real discoveries uh, very soon after. Now, so that is pure science. That's understanding the universe. It's incredibly uh, inspiring stuff. And, and I think a real discovery in Rwanda of the highest international level will do much to excite the youth uh, here about uh, studying hard and uh, seeing opportunities in science. But they're much more applied fields. And one of them, of course, is machine learning, probably the hottest topic in science right now because of its dramatic progress and impact in all sectors of industry, government, society, this, is, this uh, tool of uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning will uh, probably be transformative uh, of, the mod of the future economy. So we're very proud to be developing Africa's first ever master's program in machine intelligence. Uh, the young man on the right, uh, Mustafa Sisse, is a, one of the leading researchers, young researchers in the world in this field, and uh, he's driving this program. These are the kinds of initiatives which are happening. I'm just giving two examples, but uh, much, much more is to come. So finally, I'd just like to thank you for all being here. I think the positivity in this meeting is a powerful antidote to all the nonsense going on elsewhere. And let's make this meeting a very powerful one. Let's form alliances and let's combine to make Africa a leader in the world of science. Thank you very much.